Horizon Zero Dawn, which originally released as a PlayStation 4 exclusive, released on PC via Steam and Epic Games Store in August. Now you can get the GOG release for Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition DRM free. Previously, Sony have shared they are looking to bring more first-party titles to the PC platform in order to promote further growth in profitability. This means more PS exclusives could be coming to PC at some point. The question is, which will be next? For now, Horizon Zero West, the sequel will be releasing as an exclusive on PS5 in 2021, which will require virtually no loading screens, according to Guerrilla Games. Hopefully this means the sequel will be coming to PC at some point. CD Projekt Red shared system requirements a couple of months ago, showing the specs needed for minimum settings. New update specs for Cyberpunk 2077 have been released stating what you will need in order to run the game on high and ultra. If you're planning to play Cyberpunk 2077 on high, you will need a minimum of an RTX 2060 or Radeon RX 5700 XT. For Ultra settings, RTX 2080 Super, RTX 3070, or a Radeon RX 6800 XT. For ray tracing minimum, an RTX 2060 is recommended for 1080p. If you're running ray tracing in Ultra for 2160p, then an RTX 3080 is needed. If you want to see all the RTX hype and what the gameplay looks like with ray tracing, you can check out the video release by NVIDIA, which shows some behind the scenes and gameplay. Cyberpunk 2077 will launch on PC next month on December 10th. It will also be releasing on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S and Stadia. The free-to-play action RPG Path of Exile will be getting three events this December 2020. Grinding Gear Games has announced these events will include a one-week mayhem event, a one-week endless delve event and a three-week heist flashback event. This will give players plenty to do up until the end of the Heist League and the launch of Path of Exile's endgame expansion in January. Ending December with a bang starting December 4th, the One Week Mayhem event will take place by applying classic modifiers from past leagues, Anarchy, Invasion, Breach Ambush, Torment and Harbinger and turning them up to 11. The next event, the One Week Endless Delve event, will take place on December 11th at the Azerite Mine. Going into the depths of darkness with starter gear in this unique event and having access to passive points. The last event to take place is the Heist Flashback event starting December 18th. Each game will include several popular mods from previous leagues with a random selection of any three modifiers, changing each hour on the hour. So what will be in it for you if you complete these three events? The prize includes the new Demigod Authority, a Twilight Mystery Box for reaching level 50, and random microtransaction prizes at level 60, 70, 80, 85, 90 and 95 that will be drawn at the conclusion of each event. Inspired by the Monster Hunter film, players will be able to take part in the event quests coming to Monster Hunter World Iceborne this December 4th. The film, directed by Paul W.S. Anderson and starring Mila Djokovic, will bring the game to life. The two-part event quest lets hunters go face-to-face -face with Black Diablos, which appear in the film in a solo quest. You will also have to overcome the massive greater Raffalus. Only the worthy will be able to face this new test, as players must achieve master rank before taking on the challenge. Succeeding the event quest will grant players items such as special gear, lead armor, new titles, a new background, and guild card poses. Also starting November 27th, Iceborne players can pick up a limited time only pack full of useful items which can be claimed as a login bonus. The latest Fallout 76 Steel Dawn update was expected to release on December 1st, but due to an error, it caused the update to go live early. According to the official Fallout website, Bethesda explained that the update went live for Xbox players, meaning they couldn't play the game. Bethesda were quick to discuss with their team about the unexpected error and decided it was okay to release the Steel Dawn update for all. The DLC went live this week for all platforms, allowing Fallout 76 players to jump into Steel Dawn, just over a week earlier than expected. The Steel Dawn update adds the first part of the major quest chain. In this update, players will meet the Brotherhood, gain their trust, and begin to make a number of decisions which will ultimately determine what the Brotherhood of Steel ends up becoming. Further additions come with this update including new NPCs, factions, as well as companions. Along with the new quest will be new locations and new gear. Releasing alongside the PlayStation 5, a new generation of console, Demon's Souls was a launch title which demonstrated the console's capability. After the release of the game, the developer has released the first patch update to address some of the stability issues. In the first patch from Bluepoint, the update concentrates on fixing a few stability issues. There was no detailed set of patch notes to accompany this update, but seems to be a broad set of fixes to help with potential performance issues 
players may have come across so far. As well as announcing the first update, Bluepoint also shared that they are actively listening to the community and continue to work on fixes. This includes the gold coin glitch. Looks like the studio will continue to add further improvements to the game in response to the feedback from the community. Demon's Souls is now available to play on PlayStation 5. If you're wondering whether to dive into the game, be sure to check out our Demon's Souls remake review. Don't forget to drop by our Twitch channel to watch us play. Assassin's Creed Valhalla launched earlier this month, unleashing the Viking experience for all. But it didn't launch without a bug or two. Ubisoft have released an update that will help fix some of the most interesting bugs to say the least. One bug in particular caused dogs to levitate off the ground when you pet them. Other fixes rolled out improvements in UI and in-game guard behavior. The patch also fixes some technical problems including RAM and VRAM issues. You can check out what we thought of the game in our Assassin's Creed Valhalla review. Need some good tips and tricks to get you going? Watch our Assassin's Creed Valhalla beginner guide. The latest gameplay video for the previously announced Project EVE takes a closer look at the action RPG from South Korean developer ShiftUp. The project is led by former director of Blade and Soul, a 3D fantasy MMORPG, and a mobile game studio, ShiftUp. Project EVE was first announced back in 2019, a AAA title for both console and PC as a semi-open world title. In the latest trailer, it previews a taste of the action combat with breathtaking graphics, demonstrating the type of game it aims to be. So far, there is no launch window confirmed for Project Eve, but by looking at the website, they still seem to be recruiting, so it may be some time before we see some further in-game footage. Previous screenshots show that the world is in a post-apocalyptic setting, which looks to be influenced by Nier Automata. The developer has said that they're inspired by Nier Automata and the latest God of War. The main character also has some bionic features going on if you take a closer look at her back. Yoko Taro himself actually praised the title, if that's not endorsement enough, I don't know what is. The action RPG colonial set Grief 4 released at the end of last year and has now surpassed 1 million copies sold. Developer Spiders and publisher Focus Home Interactive said that the title will be coming to platforms PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X with additional content. Greedfall introduced players to the island of Tirfredi, taking on the role of Desarted. Their family has been afflicted with a mysterious illness and to find the cure, the adventure takes them to Tirfredi. This title features a pretty impressive set of RPG systems, including the chance to put your own party together, customizing everything from magical abilities to armor. The combat mixes your traditional melee and guns options with a choice of magic spells, letting you cast and use traditional weapons at the same time. If you want to know what we thought of this adventure into new lands, you can check out our Gridfall review and RPG with plenty of choice. Well, that's it for the week in the wikis. Please join us again next week for yet another great week of gaming. Remember to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supporter benefits and budding writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks again for being part of this great community. Keep checking in with us with news, reviews, YouTube streams and vids and general wiki goodness. Oh,